Wix Studio, one end-to-end -end web creation platform for your agency to deliver exceptional work with absolute efficiency. The number one long form writer that helps SEOs outrank competition at the click of a button using real time research and NLP. Start ranking content today with contentatscale.ai. Hello, hello. And uh, yeah, that's me, Anna. I've been in marketing about 25 years. I know. I was expecting people to shout out, you don't look that old. How rude. So, um, why does your CEO hate SEO? A fart in your general direction. Your mother was a hamster and your father smelled of elderberries. I tried to think of something that described how I felt when I worked in house, of how the CEO I felt felt about me as an SEO. And this was the slide, and this was the quote from Monty Python that came to my head. And part of me thought, oh, it's just imposter syndrome. I just feel like that. But actually, when I was at Brighton SEO last time, I talked to loads of SEOs, and I had sort of similar feelings. My boss thinks he knows SEO better than I do. And my CEO changes all my SEO plans. I feel that she doesn't trust me. And it was just everyone I talked to had this sort of feeling of this lack of trust. And I saw this lovely poll on Twitter. Well, it's not lovely. It's people talking about quite quitting, and they asked the SEO people, and there's lots of things about unsupported, feeling undervalued. And it's really difficult trying to do your job when you're not getting that buy-in in the business. And what does this look like in reality? So about a couple of years ago, I went for a new job. And it's wonderful. It sounded really, really good. Um, it was going to be heading up digital marketing. And I was like, oh, they didn't have a huge budget. I was like, right, we'll do some really good organic stuff. Let's do you know, some SEO. It's wonderful. It's all about movies. So I was like, we can do some really good SEO on this. And they loved it. They loved all my ideas. And I got the job. And then I started. And I had a meeting about an hour into that first day. And they said to me, um, we just want to tell you something. Um, our site has no SEO. We know that you want to do it. but..." Apart from our home page, every page on the site is behind a login wall. So we don't have any SEO. I was like, oh, OK. Um, surprise. So I started this job and had to rethink everything I did. I couldn't even create had no CMS, had no landing pages. It was really good fun. But then I started looking a bit wider and thinking, is this just sort of SEO? Is this just um, struggling? But then I found it's not just you, it's not just me. I actually, I found the stat and I was like, oh my God, that explains it all. 32%, only 32% of CEOs trust their CMOs. If they're not trusting their CMOs, they're not trusting their SEOs, they're not trusting their digital manager, they're not trusting anyone underneath. That is such a small percentage that they are trusting. And it's incredibly difficult. And I started digging into why is this? Why do they not trust CMOs? What is the difficulty? And I found that half of CEOs are from finance and operations backgrounds, which is very, very different. It's very cost cutting. It's very um, spreadsheet sort of operations driven. It's, it's not like marketing. It's, it's very, it doesn't change very often. It's very similar. You know, there's no big surprises. You know, I mean, in marketing, we get a surprise every other week. So it was, it's very, very different. And actually, only 5 to 15% come from marketing backgrounds. So this is, this is some of the reasons why we're really struggling. And then I found some more data. So out of who they trusted the most, we can see this pattern then. If they're from finance and operations backgrounds, they're trusting the CFO, they're tr trusting the COO, and look at poor old chief marketing officer with its tiny percentage there. It's really, really hard. So if it's starting, it's, it's this issue across all of marketing. So I had another surprise. I started another job. And um, it was for a big retailer. And I thought, brilliant. Digital marketing is going to be, they've been around for years. It's going to be amazing. And once again, I had my plans. I'm a... It, 
SEO, organic at heart, and they had very low margins, and so I thought, oh, great, we need a big return on investment. So I told them all my plans. I got to the, the job, and we, I said, right, I talked to the SEO manager. I was like, right, tell me about your SEO. Tell me, give me some details. She goes, okay, so this is our main site, which has the products on. And then all of the CMS and the content is on this WordPress website with a subdomain and not branded the same as the main site, no persistent navigation, and um, it cannibalizes all of our SEO. And uh, so I said to, I, I, in turn, I said, look, we really need this. We're a big retailer. We really need to have a, a, a CMS. But they're in a big rebuild. So I was like, and you know what happens. SEO has been deprioritized across the board. And he goes, the IT goes, it's OK. I'll do something for you. So about, it was about two months later, he came back. Surprise! So we're like, yes, we've got a CMS. And what happened was not a CMS. It was a page with a frame in it, not even a WYSIWYG editor. It had HTML code in. And what we had to do is copy and paste it to Notepad and then copy and write our text and then copy it back into this frame. And then we could set the, the URL and we could put a few meta tags and then we would publish it. And so for a couple of years, this is what we use the CMS. And it felt like using this. It really did. Because once again, and this is what happens if they don't trust marketing and then they don't trust SEO, you get deprioritized and it's really, really, really hard to get your job done and to add value to the company. So I've got some sort of tips on how to build that communication between two of them. So my first thing is, um, I am a strategist at heart, and so I like to get things written down. So some more shocking graphics. Only 36% of marketers don't, um, sorry, 36% of marketers don't document their marketing strategy at all, and 47% only document portion of it. I haven't done the maths, but it doesn't leave many that actually document all of it. So, but the thing is, when you do document it, it's successful. You tend to be more successful. And the reason is because strategy is important. And as my favorite pop band Steps say, strategy, when the feeling is gone and you can't go on, it's strategy. I mean, look at him. He knows. He's excited about strategy. Look at him. So, it's really important to get that strategy written down. Mine tend to look like this. This is uh, Kevin from Home Alone and his battle plan. It doesn't matter exactly what format that you have to write it down. You just need to make sure that you're including your research, your hypothesis. A strategy, people think it's a one-time document, but what it is is a living, breathing document, and it generally is a hypothesis. In a strategy, you don't have to have all the answers. You have to be able to say, I have this research. This is what I believe will happen if we take these actions. And then most importantly, how we're going to measure if it's a success. So that's the basic core bones that you need in your strategy. So the next point is that you need to bring everyone on the journey with you. Has anyone ever fell asleep in a car or train and then woke up and gone, oh, God, I don't know where I am? Where, you know, you, you thought you were in Birmingham and you're actually in Aberdeen. And that's what it feels like for a lot of CEOs, even the ones from marketing backgrounds, because you know what happens, that SEO and everything changes so quickly, and they feel they've got a hang of it, and then it all changes. And that can make it really, really difficult for them. So you need to be able to bring them along with you. You need to take them step by step, regular updates, keeping them abreast of what's happening, because that communication is absolutely key. And not just the CEO. Who else was really trusted? So we do a lot of um, uh, stuff with the CFOs as well in um, our business, because if you can get the CFO on side, he's got the budgets, or she's got the budget. That was really sexist of me saying he first, wasn't it? They have got the budgets, and they can help you get that buy-in as well. So. Don't think about, think about the entire C-suite and who can get you that budget. And the best way to start this is by interviewing. Oh, I love interviews. So half of my job is interviewing internal staff for customers. And 
I'm hoping you haven't got David Brent as your, uh, as your boss. Um, I think, actually, if you've got David Brent as your boss, just quit. Quit, quit now. So interviewing is a great place to get that what are your objectives? What are your goals? Really start connecting with your C-suite or your MD because people love to talk about themselves, particularly CEOs. They want to tell you about the business. They want to tell you what's going on. And you can ask, start asking them about what, what do you want to see from us? What's really important? And not only is this great for your job, but it's good for your career as well because you start building those relationships. And then that means you can take them on the journey more often. I've sat down with CFOs and done basic SEO, what is it, um, reports and CEOs as well, just to sort of actually start them off on a base level. So really start connecting with these people. And then what you need to do, and this is going a little bit back to what Thierry was saying about the data, because you've got to show the value to others. So when we look at what the CEO thinks marketing to do, it's about growing the business. They also say ROI is really important to them. Obviously, SEO can offer a really great ROI. And then also um, business outcomes and new customer acquisition. So in none of this, they don't want to know a sort of what backlinks you've got, what sort of where you are on, on, um, on Google. They want to know about the business side of it. Where, how are you furthering this forward? I want to give you an example. Um, when I worked at... Um, digital marketing in a high street retailer game, we had a, we wanted to start digital PR and SEO um, after we had this magnificent um, sort of CMS built for us. And we, we, what we wanted to do is show the value to people. And they didn't understand SEO. They didn't understand digital PR. And so we, we, what we did is we actually went around and interviewed all the teams in-house to find out a little bit more about what their goals were. And we found out that commercial team really wanted to get rid of a load of stock of gaming chairs. And we thought, OK, this is interesting. So we were doing a Christmas campaign of, as our first campaign. And we thought, OK, how can we make this campaign link up to gaming chairs? So and what had happened at the same time, we'd had this new gaming chair hub page that had been created, and it started ranking. It was, once again, no one had involved SEO. So it was not ranking, it was about two keywords. It was absolutely not doing very well at all. So we thought, OK, this campaign, we'll do the campaign. And then we linked the page through to our gaming chair hub. And then what we did is then tracked who was going through to the gaming chair hub. It was near Christmas, and gaming chairs sell really well at Christmas. We tracked conversions. So we could say, actually, we got loads of coverage. It was on the cold budget. It was lovely. We got all these backlinks. But commercially, we know that this campaign fed through to here, and this, we, you know, we could see this rise in conversions, which they could understand. It was on a spreadsheet. This is why people, particularly CEOs and CFOs, like paid. It's money in, money out on a spreadsheet. It's really, they think, there it is. I can see it. We know it's not as easy as that. Um, you know, that's, this is why they like the sort of last click attribution because once again oh last click oh paid paid's got the glory again because that's what happens every single time paid always gets the glory because they don't understand all the different stages so this is part of your education process of educating c-suite where is seo in this pipeline how is it contributing it how are we measuring it and how can we convert those measurements to how you like so talk, translate it into their language that they think that you know, speak, most uh, marketers speak our own language, and this is the problem. If we are telling them about how something is performing, we have to think in COO, COO language. So if we're doing a report, we want to be reporting on things such as, how is this SEO helping us hit our target? So the business target, how are we moving the company forward? Is SEO performing better or worse than we'd expected, and why? You know, these are the things they want to know, the high-level stuff. What does SEO need to reach its target? And what do we do next and why? And it's really important to keep this really high-level stuff when you're talking to CEOs and CEOs and because they want to understand it in their language. And in an ideal world, we would meet halfway and they would sort of you know, meet us halfway. But if anyone's heard the term managing upwards, you know, that happens quite a lot, and you have to manage upwards and, and manage your CEOs. And so this way, it's 
it's helping to get them sort of interested in understanding what you're doing because um, it can be frustrating and I just want to say that it is it's not a reflection on what we're doing it's not a reflection on our our jobs on SEO it's a miscommunication but there is a knock-on effect where it makes you feel a bit pants you know when people are not trusting you and you're not getting buy-in it can make you feel a bit down so what I've done is um, just for a little bit of a pep I've done some little pack of positive SEO affirmations for you to make you feel like next time you're taking on your CEO you can be a little bit happier so um, my SEO strategies are powerful and effective and bring results with each algorithm update I become more adaptable and resilient I am confident in my decisions and trust my SEO instincts. And it's sod lemonade. When life gives me 404s, I have 301 redirects. So I've actually got some packs of positive SEO affirmations. If anyone wants one to cheer themselves up, you can have it on your desk for next time the CEO angers you or a client of your agency side. So what this is all about is when a CEO is saying, show me the money, you need to show them the money. You need to try and work out how can you connect your, your stats and your details to what they want to see. You know, Thierry's saying about connecting with different teams and pooling your data together, making sure that you're giving that picture of how is SEO and how is marketing growing the business? How am I reaching your objectives? And the thing with this is, it's going to make your life easier. You're going to get buy-in better. You're going to get more budget. You're going to just have that better career prog progression because you're getting them on the side. And it isn't difficult. I'm not going to say it's easy. It's difficult because this takes a lot of work. You have to keep your strategies up to date. You do have to keep communicating. Force your way into their offices. Put your foot in the door. Make sure that they're listening to you and see if you can get some people on side because it's really important. And it's not just for heads of SEO. My SEO managers, my SEO apprentices, they always I'd shove them in the room with the chief digital officer and try and get that recognition of what they're doing and what they're up to. And I, I haven't got any more surprises, but I hadn't done anything for dog lovers, so I thought I'd include this instead. <laughs> and um, so I, this is the end of my talk. I have um, a couple of copies of a book I wrote um, with 35 other authors of Mark Schaefer. If anyone wants a copy, just might feel inspire you. I've got some packs of SEO positive affirmations, like I said. And I just wanted to come out of this with thinking that it is possible to change it and change the dynamic, but it has to come from you. It has to, you have to help push it forward and um, you know, you are awesome. I did want to put a slide of that everything is awesome from Lego in here, but I couldn't find one big enough. Um, but uh, so thank you very much. And I hope you feel positive about your way forward. Monthly reporting, making you want to shove sharp things up your nose? Try Dragon Metrics, the all-in-one SEO software with mind-blowing reporting tools. 